but I do have some slides up on my website. I have a couple different websites, but they're all accessed from mystreetmychoice.com because I can't think of a better principle for the crazy 4G, 5G rollout that they're trying to shove down everyone's throat right now. But uh, the one organization that you can thank for this disaster is the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, called ALEC. And they've had an agenda that they published and wrote state bills and handed them out to all the states, including the Hawaii. And Hawaii, unfortunately, has uh, passed that state bill. You're one of 23 states that uh, fell victim to that bad state bill. Uh, we in California, fortunately, got a veto of our ALEC bill. That was called Senate Bill 649. And a group of us worked six months full time to beat that bill, and we finally did. So we in California have a chance, <clears throat> excuse me, to fight this city by city and try to get better local regulations in order to decide how we wanna integrate technology into our communities. And we've been able to do that and slow down the whole rollout of 4G and 5G um, in particular communities. And that's important not to have anyone sign a master license agreement and to work with your local city council members because the buck stops with your city councils. And what you really realize when you read the 1996 Telecommunications Act, it was uh, very carefully crafted to have a cooperative federalism. What does that mean? It means that the federal government is sharing with the states and the local communities the regulation duties and obligations. So whatever the federal government doesn't claim for themselves is passed on to the states and locals. Whatever the state doesn't claim for itself is passed on to the locals. So when you really look at it, there are very few telecommunications laws passed by our elected representatives that set the stage. And so at the federal level, they claim just a few small things, then pass it on to the states. Each state then can weigh in with their state utility commission and pass additional regulation. And then we get finally down to the locals. Good news is your locals have probably about 80% of it. They've just been told a myth that their hands are tied. That's a myth. You can actually get to your local city councils and they can actually pass protective ordinances. We have already in Northern California. We have a number of cities that are protecting the residential zones and we will have no small cells, 4G or 5G, in our local residential areas. We're gonna put them only in commercial and industrial zones. And the other thing that local communities can and should do right now is to take full advantage of two court decisions. We'll review it again in the slides if we have time, but I just wanna get this out right up front because it's very important. In August 9th of this year, we had a really important case and it was the uh, Kitwa tribes and other tribes that went after the FCC and said, excuse me, you're trying to skirt NEPA review, N-E-P-A, National Environmental Protection Act, and you're gonna try to build on our sacred lands? Uh, no, we don't like that. And what happened in that case was that in addition to the plaintiffs, the three main plaintiffs all tied to tribes, we had a wonderful man, Edward B. Myers, living in Montgomery County, Maryland. He wrote an intervener brief. He said, hey, we don't need this in neighborhoods either. And he threw his intervener brief in along with the National Resources Defense Council, NRDC. And guess what? The judges fully recognized him in this case. They don't have to do that, but they did in this case. So when the judges finally ruled, they ruled against the FCC trying and the wireless industry trying to skirt environmental review, and they vacated that portion of the order, and it applies to the entire United States. It applies to every state that passed that bad Alex State Bill. So it applies to Hawaii. What can you do tomorrow? You can walk into your local city council and you can say, excuse me, I would like to see the substantial written evidence in the file that shows that the wireless industry and the FCC have completed the court mandated 
environmental assessment or environmental impact statement. Because if they haven't, then everything must stop tomorrow. No more applications, no more processing, no more installations, because every application is now incomplete. That is a strategy everyone can use in every state across the United States today. In fact, we did it last night in Napa. So it's a very, very strong move to make right now because it's gonna take them a good six, eight, 12 months to do such an environmental assessment and such an environmental impact statement. And that buys in the time that we need. Why? Because the FCC also is trying to do something very bad. They're trying to say that they have jurisdiction over the public rights of way. And they did that through a very bad order, September order, in September 2018. Well, they don't. It's just a farce. And they're gonna lose that. That's gonna be vacated as well. And that'll be argued. The problem is that while it's being argued, we didn't get a stay. A stay is something that says, we're gonna put that ruling aside while we take it through the courts. That unfortunately didn't happen. But this is exactly how local communities can get their own stay. As you pass local ordinances, you say, hmm, this order might or might not be real six months from now. So we as a local community should think that there's a fork in the road. Path A, the order stands. All right, we gotta prepare for that world. We gotta write our regulations so it respects that order and we'll write them that way. Path B is, oh, what if we never had that order? What else would we like to do? And you get to write the, or the ordinance just like that. So what you ask them to do is vote for a single thing with ordinance A and ordinance B, pass them both at the same time with a paragraph at the end that says, based on what the Ninth Circuit finally rules on this order, if they vacate the order, which is what we expect, well then version B leaps into position and takes over. And oh, by the way, wireless industry, for every application you've brought forward during this period of time, we reserve the right to have you at your own expense pull it right back out because we don't necessarily have to have them in our public rights of way. And so by doing that, you give them fair warning, it's an even rule applies to everyone, and now you have a way to get a de facto stay for your own community. And you do that through your local city councils. So no matter what has been told to you by the wireless industry or what has been told to you by your, your utility commission, you actually have a lot of very good tools at your disposal. And so you have a chance to put those into action. One final thing I'll say is that we had a big fight over net neutrality. You know, and that was this whole thing about is the internet regulated by the FCC or not? And we've been fighting about it for a good 15 years. Well, the, uh, the Obama FCC said, you know what? The courts informed us and we're, if we want to actually put regulation in place, we have to make it Title II regulated. That gives us the authority to regulate. So they did. And they passed that and the country was happy. And that meant that nobody could you know, shade things or do bad things like th blocking or throttling or charging extra money for things. It was good. Everybody had common carriage on the internet, just like on a railroad system. Everyone paid the same fare to go to the same distances. Well, the Trump FCC came in and said, Ooh, we don't like that. That means that uh, Verizon and AT&T can't maximize their profits. So we're going to rescind that. And we're going to now call it Title I, unregulated. Country didn't like that, so it went to court. And so they just announced the decision on October 1st. Very interesting decision. The FCC asked for two things. They wanted one, we're not gonna regulate the internet anymore. It's Title I, we have no say. We have no, we're willingly pulling our own teeth, okay? We're not gonna regulate it. They wanted to say that and they did. Second was, and we don't want the states to preempt anything that, about the internet. We wanna make sure they can't pass their own net neutrality regulations. Well, the courts looked at this and said, oh, you guys, you've been fighting about this for a decade and a half and you just keep flipping it one way or the other way. 
All right, we have to defer to you as the expert agency. And even though we think it's not very smart, we're gonna let you take it back to Title I because that's what you want. But guess what? The minute you did that, you pulled your own teeth, you have no say anymore on over the internet. So you can't preempt the states. Ta-da! Take a look at what is the purpose of a small cell. You will hear in all of the testimony. Oh, the voice is all handled by the macro towers and we're coming in close to your homes in order to do data services like the internet, you know, and streaming video and gaming and all that stuff. Well, guess what? Those are internet frequencies. You no longer have any preemption. You no longer regulate it. You hit yourself with your own dumb stick. That's exactly where we are. So now you say, huh, what do we have to do as a local community? Well, the only thing the FCC regulates at this point are voice frequencies. Okay, well, what are those? 850 megahertz, sometimes bumps up to 1900 megahertz. Are those the frequencies that are on these 4G, 5G crazy small cells in front of our houses? Oh, they're not. How about that? Well, wireless company, tell you what, we're having to allow you to put in some um, small cells if you have a significant gap in coverage. At least that's true in the Ninth Circuit, of which Hawaii is. That's our decision from 2005. And hey, if you got a real gap, we recognize you have a right to put in something for a telecommunications voice call. That's all it's all about. It's all about 911 calls by voice. That's all they regulate. That's all they have preemption for. There is no preemption for video, internet, other ways of making money. Doesn't exist. They no longer regulate it. This was upheld on October 1st. So you say, cool. If you're gonna come into the public rights away, then we're gonna ask you to do a couple of things. You're claiming you need to go down the block a thousand feet, something like that, great. What's the minimum amount of power that will get that done? What's the least amount of power to do it? And what's the smallest antenna that will do that? Turns out it's not much power. The good news, we already have a model that will work and it doesn't look at all like the antennas they're already putting up. Your local community can say, excuse me, instead of these big four foot tall antennas and boxes on the street, they're 28 cubic feet the size of a refrigerator. Yeah, we don't want those. We're not cool with that. Bring back a four inch antenna and now give me a power supply the size of your hand. And when you plug that in, you're gonna see that that will output from the face of the antenna right there, right at the shroud, right there at the pole, something that puts out 40 milliwatts of power. 40 milliwatts of power will go down the street half a mile. It'll give you five bars on a cell phone and it will enable you to make a call. That's all your local community needs to do. It's just like taking a go to Best Buy pick up a nice beefy wireless router for your house, carry it out to the pole, put it on top of the pole, plug in the little wall wart, boom. How far will that go down the street? Oh, look, about a quarter to a half a mile. How about that? That's all you need. That's all you need to do it, is you say, we're a green city. We care about energy efficiency. We're not cool with putting big antennas that just blast away 24 hours a day and just putting all this effective radiated power all over the place. No, all we need to do is provide the ability to place a call. So when it comes to doing video and gaming and streaming, we're cool with a junction box at the bottom of the pole that gives all of the neighbors access to it so we can jack in our own fiber optic cables and get that directly to our homes. So once we have it in our home, now we have the consumer choice. We can say, I'm a wired house, I'm smart. I know I don't want a bunch of wires around me. And so I'm gonna put it through my wired router and have ethernet cables go everywhere. And I've got a nice, safe, clean home. I get that choice. I get that choice because I run my house that way. It's my house. 
hey, if someone else wants to run a wireless router, that's their choice. That's very much like saying, smoke inside your house. If you want to smoke inside your house, hey, you can do it. It's legal. It's not smart. You can do it. And you'll pollute the whole environment and hurt your kids and hurt your plants and your pets and all that stuff. But it's your choice. It's a consumer choice. Well, that's the same choice you make when you run a wireless router. If you want to run one, you can. You can smoke 24 hours a day if you want. Or you can turn it off at night when you go to bed because nobody needs it then. That saves a lot of exposure until you eventually decide that it's not so cool to hurt my children and hurt my pets and hurt my plants just by having a wireless router. So maybe eventually you'll get rid of it. But that is your choice. That's very different than saying, well, what we have here in Hawaii is when you move into this neighborhood, you're gonna have to have a small cell in front of your house and it's going to be pumping toxic smoke into your house 24 hours a day. That's what it's like when you live in our neighborhood. And we're gonna force that to happen because you don't have any choice. That's just the way it is. Well, you would never design a community that way. And there's no reason why you have to accept a community like that. So you have absolute good tools in front of you right now to say, we're, we want modern services. We want high speed. But what we want, we want data that's big data. That's called video files and internet. We want that by fiber optic. And small data, stuff that's for an emergency call, like when you break down on the road and you gotta make a quick call, we're cool with that being wireless. And so we're gonna get the right mix of wired and wireless. And we shouldn't allow the wireless company to hoard the fiber optic cables. Why is that? It's in the public conduit. All of that fiber optic that has been existing there for years and years and years, it's public property. It should not be misappropriated by the wireless industry for their own private uses. The cities in Hawaii can just look into their files and figure out which fiber is around and make a claim of it and say it is our fiber now and we will charge anyone access for it, including the wireless companies. And that's what the Irregulators lawsuit is all about. It is about correcting an accounting misappropriation that's happened for the last 20 years. It's crazy stupid that this is allowed to happen, but the regulators versus the FCC lawsuit right now will correct a complete illegal cross-subsidy from your state public telecommunications utility company, that's the company that gives you landlines, and towards wireless companies. Because everyone has seen what has happened. We used to all have landlines, and then we would use our cell phone once in a while. But now it's kind of shifted. And now not as many people have landlines, but lots of people use cell phones. And so what really used to happen was that they said, when you look at any network, and that's true of any place in the United States, when you're trying to get data from point A to point B, it goes 95% of the way there on a bunch of wires, fiber optic cable or copper or something else. And only the last 5% do we make a choice. And we say, well, are you gonna get it by wire or are you gonna get it wirelessly? That's just the last 5%, all right? Well, all of that 95%, those are shared common infrastructure and shared common costs. So what can you do? You really should share those based on the revenues. That's the way it was always set up. 20 years ago, 75-25. 20 years ago, 75% of the revenue was for landlines, 25% were for cell phones. So they split the costs that way, 75% to the landline and 25% to the cell phone guys. Got it. Now it's kind of shifted the other way. So now it's like 75% of the revenues are wireless and only 25% are in landlines. But what does the FCC allow the costs to be? they make the landlines that are only 25% of the revenue pay 75% of the costs. That's what the accounting scandal is all about. It's cross subsidizing. It's stealing money from the landline company and illegally giving it to a wireless company. That's a regulated company that has public benefits for everyone to get served at reasonable rates to a private company that can charge whatever they want and soak us for everything they can. This is wrong, it is illegal, and it can be fixed by supporting the regulators versus the FCC lawsuit. When you sue the FCC, the people that do it, it's a thankless job. 
you get no money award at the end. And it just gets remanded back to the FCC. These people have dipped into their own pockets to make this lawsuit happen. The attorney, Scott McCullough, put in $50,000 of his own time to write it. It's 317 pages, it's excellent. It's in the shoot, it's been accepted by the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. These people need support and we need to actually donate to them.